Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Uh, this evening on page 50, uh, we're just towards the middle of the page, and we're going to start with Ramadutta Yadid Mahe, Vayuputraya Dimaki, Tano Hanamat. You know, you can take a clue from what we're doing. Each of the deities that we're worshiping, we're beginning with a Gayatri mantra. And then we're going to do a Dhyanam. And then we're going to do a Nyasam. And then we're going to do some Japa. And then we're going to do uh, some of the various uh, 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 stotrums for each deity. We're going to make an offering and uh, all. So let's start with the Gayatri. Om, we meditate upon that ambassador of Ra. So actually he's the, the, the ambassador Ra, Ah, Ma. Ra is the subtle body, Ah is the illumination of consciousness, Ma is the perfection the perfection of the manifestation of consciousness in the subtle body, Ram. And he, Hanuman, is the ambassador. And the ambassador of Ram is meditated upon. Contemplate the son of the wind, he's Papanathut. He's the son of the wind, he's the, he, he, the wind stands for emancipation. And so the son of the wind is the son of liberation. He's totally emancipated. No one says to the wind where you should blow and where you shouldn't. You could say, please don't blow here, but it, he will or he will not, depending upon his own intention. He really does not respond to our ideas. He is totally liberated, free at will to proceed according to his own desire. May that Hanuman grant us increase. Now, we discussed already, Hanu is a chin and Mon is the embodiment. Hanu is, because he fell on his chin, he broke the rock. Nobody, he was so strong. He was a, a, a Bajaramboli. He, he, had, he was so strong, he was like a diamond or like lightning, a Bajar. Vajra is Indra's lightning, and Vajrang Boli, the strong one who's strong as lightning, he's strong as a diamond, he's hard, his chin cut through the stone. So he became a Hanu because he fell on the chin. And remember we said that Ha was the, the gross body, all per, that's perceived through the senses. Ha is consciousness, the illumination of consciousness. Uh, no, Ah, nu is who pervades all, and man is the manifestation or the embodiment of, or the, the cause of the mind, of the strength that pervades all, all that you perceive. So this is Hanuman, and he's got a beautiful dhyanam. Uh, Let's recite a little bit. Mahasailam samupadya davantam rabanam prati tishta tishta rane dushta gorarabam samutrijan. Oh, bearing aloft the great mountain to purify the acts of Ravan. He is situated firmly established in the delight of renouncing the horrors of evil. So here he is, he's Giridhar. He went to the Himalayas to bring the Sanjeevani to save Lakshman, which was the 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 evil act of Ravan in making war against Ram and Lakshman. They they bound Lakshman in a in a, a posh in a, a a net or a bondage of, uh, created by snakes, which suck out all the energy from their victim. And uh, when he, he uh, 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 so uh, Hanuman went to get the herb and he couldn't figure out which herb to bring, so he brought the whole mountain. He became Giridhar, who uplifted the mountain. He is situated firmly in the delight of renouncing the horrors of evil. All of us know when we do evil what horrible effects it has upon 
everyone in our purview of influence. Uh, the, the effects of evil are pervading, and he allows us the privilege of renouncing those effects. He appears terrifying, the color, with the color of a red lac. He's totally red. He's covered with sindur. He is a, a, a red monkey, lal langur. Uh, the most excellent destroyer at the end of time. So he is Mahakal, the great time, the great destroyer at the end of time. All dissolves into him. He's Shiva. His eyes are shining like fire and radiant as 10 million suns. So he's got the sun and the moon and the fire as the three eyes. And they're radiant, they're shining. They look like 10 million suns. With the body of a great warrior, he wears the form of Rudra, Asrudrayate, the reliever of suffering. We contemplate he who travels like the speed of the wind pretty clear, who has conquered his senses and has a most extensive intellect, the soul of the wind, showing a monkey's face, we take refuge in the ambassador of the respected Lord Ram. So remember uh, Narad was, was sitting and meditating in, in a forest that was blessed by Shiva that anyone here will be free from passion. Of course, Indra said, why is Narad meditating so strongly? Uh, he must be be desirous of achieving the kingdom of heaven. He wants to conquer my throne. Gods, go down there and disturb Narad's meditation. And they tried, and he, uh, 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 Vayu tried, and he made the wind blow, and Narad sat there silently, and Agni made the fire burn, and Narad sat there silently unmoved, and the Varuna made the waters to flood, and Narad sat there silently, and no one could disturb his meditation. And he got up from his meditation at the end, and he said, I defeated all the gods. I've even conquered the god of love. No one could move me from my asan. I was sitting in silent meditation. And uh, he went to Vaikuntha and he said, Vishnu, I just defeated all the gods. I defeated even the god of love. No one was able to make me move from my meditation. And Vishnu said, that's, that's wonderful, Narad. You are so, that's so exciting. But don't let Shiva hear that. And then Narad went to Brahma Loka and he said, Brahma, I just defeated all the gods and even I defeated the god of love. And Brahma said, oh, that's wonderful, Narad, but don't ever say that in front of Shiva. And Narad went to Kailash and he's, and Parvati said, Narad, you are shining so radiantly. What happened to you? Why are you so excited and so shining? And he couldn't keep it in. He said, oh, Shiva Parvati, I just sat in meditation and I defeated all the gods and I even defeated the god of love. No one could make me give up my meditation. And Shiva chuckled. No one defeats the god of love. Everyone, when they see Maya, they can't help themselves but to act. So Narad took his leave and he went out around the world and as he was uh, 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 traversing the sky and circumambulating the earth, he looked down and he saw this beautiful princess. <laughs> she was the daughter of King Nidhi and that means the disciplined king. 
And Nidhi's daughter was named Vishwamohini, <laughs> she who deludes the universe. And Narada went down and he looked at Vishwamohini and he fell in love immediately. He forgot all about how he had just defeated the god of love. King Nidhi said, Narad Muni has come. Please, you come here and please, would you read the palm of my daughter? She's just about to get married and she's going to choose her husband. And Narad said, certainly I will. He took the palm of the young lady into his hand and he looked at the lines of her palm and he said, oh, whoever marries this woman is going to be one with the Lord of the universe. He's going to be as powerful as the, the supreme divinity himself. And Narad said, oh, she, she has a very nice hand. Uh, uh, you'll excuse me. And he went immediately to Vishnu's loka in Poikunt. And he said, Vishnu, I just saw the most beautiful lady and she's got her swayambar. She's going to get married tomorrow. She gets to choose her husband. I want you to give me the most distinctive face that you could possibly give. Ah, so it, uh, it, it, Vishnu said, Narad, you just came here yesterday and told me you defeated the god of love and now you're trying to get married to this lady? And Narad said, yes, yes, that's, that's true. But you know, I, she's captivated my heart. She's the love of my life. I want to be with her eternally. And so Vishnu said, okay, I will give you the most distinctive appearance and certainly you will be recognized in the assembly of all the kings. And so he, he turned Narad into a monkey. And Narad was certain he was the most beautiful and most handsome of all the princes. He walked right into the assembly and the, the princess picked up the garland and she was going to put the garland on her lover and who was going to become her husband for, for eternity and he would become the, the king of all the gods and the most powerful of all the gods. And she looked at Narad and she began to laugh. And then she passed right by Narad and she went around the room and she gave the garland to Vishnu. And Narad said, wait a minute, stop! You made a mistake! I am the most handsome man in this assembly. <laughs> and everyone started to laugh. You're a monkey! And two friends of Shiva, uh, 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 Joya and Vijaya, uh, they said, Narat, come with us and look at your face in a mirror. Do you know what you look like? And they showed Narat that he had the face of a monkey. And Narad got mad and he said, Vishnu, you tricked me, you cheated me, and Shiva, you cheated me too, and I curse you both. Vishnu, you will be separated from your beloved, just like I am bereft of my beloved tonight. And Shiva, you will become a monkey. And I curse you both. Only the monkeys will be able to help save the, the, the world from the, the ravages of the Asuras. Only the monkeys will help. Uh, you think it's funny that you made me a monkey? You made a monkey out of me? Well, I curse you all. Shiva, you will become a monkey. Vishnu, you will be, you'll lose your beloved and you will need the monkeys in order to help you find your beloved again. And oh, only the monkeys will be venerated as the servants of God. That was the curse he gave. So now, here comes the monkeys. Uh, and he is the ambassador uh, of the respected Lord Ram showing a monkey's face, the soul of the wind. Uh, Shiva came down as the 11th avatar, of, uh, a, a, as his 11th incarnation in the form of a monkey. 
a laulangur, a red monkey. With incomparable strength, bearing the golden mountain, he is the divine being who eradicated evil from the forest, the foremost name among the wise, being the repository of all qualities, while wearing the form of a monkey king. We bow down with devotion to he was born of the wind. He's Pavan Sutta, he's born of the wind, the son of the wind, the bearer of the blessings of the Lord of Ragu. So he comes bearing the blessings of, of Ram. Who was born of the womb of the shining one? The son of the wind of great strength, a son who is steadfast in his vow of Brahmachari. Literally, he who moves with a Brahman, who, he who lives in Brahman, who moves in Brahman, he, he dwells with Brahman, he walks with God, he, he moves towards God. Uh, we establish that Hanuman within us. Hanuman me, pratishtitam, in me, the same satyam chame, dharma chame, karma chame, shodish chame, yagain kalpantam. It's locative case within me. We establish Hanuman me, pratishtitam, within us. <laughs> Hanuman chame. And now we're going to establish the pot. Take a pot. We're going to establish the kailash. We're going to fill that with consciousness. We're going to fill that with love. We're going to make it a container of consciousness, the emblem, the murti that we construct ourselves. It's a container full of love and light and wisdom and peace and blessings. We're going to put the whole creation inside it and we'll put it coconut on top of it with a smiling face and cover it with a cloth. And that will become the image of the divinity. We take the shakti out of our heart and we put it into the murti. We take the shakti out of the murti, put it on a flower and put it back in our heart. We take the shakti out of our heart, put it on a flower and put it into the pot. We take the, and then we blow the pran pratishta, we blow our life force into the pot. And then we take the shakti out of the pot, put it on a flower, put it back into our heart, and we put it on the flower, and we put it on the yantra. And then we make pran pratishta to the yantra, we make pran pratishta to the pot, we make pran pratishta to the murti, we make pran pratishta to the god within my heart, we make, we put that uh, same, Shakti and put it on a flower and put it in the fire. And then we make pran patishta to the fire. And pretty soon we're moving prana. We're moving this life force. We're moving this energy of infinite goodness, the, the force that co coincides with our breath. It's the subtle body of all of life. We control it. And then we can give it to whoever whomever we wish to. And we can do pran pratishta to that divine being. So now we're going to establish a pot. Now, st start off by touching the earth. You can use your tatwa mudra and touch the earth. Om burasi bubi rasya dithirasi vishwadara. You are the object of sensory perception. Earth is a gross it's, you can see it, you can smell it, you can taste it, you can see, hear it, you can feel it. You are the goddess who distributes the forms of the earth. You are the producer of the universe, the support of all existing things in the universe. Control or sustain the earth. Firmly establish the earth. Make the earth efficient in its motion. So, hey, you go, earth, you just stay here. And I can touch the uh, I can touch the altar. I can touch the floor. I can wherever I'm going to put my pot. That's where I'm going to touch, and I'm going to purify that earth. Hey, earth, you stay still, because I'm going to give you a pot. Actually, I'm going to give you some rice, and then on top of the rice, I'm going to give you a pot, and on top of the so earth, you stay still. 
You have the capacity to stay still, thumb, sting, steer, oh, bubba. You stay still. And now I'm going to put some rice in that place where I just touched. And I'm going to say, you are the grains which satisfy and gladden the gods. You are giving you nourishment. I, I'm going to get the prasad of my offering. Whatever I offer is what I'm going to get back. I'm giving you nourishment. You are the grains which satisfy and gladden the gods, gladden the sacrifice, gladden the Lord of the sacrifice, bring satisfaction to us through sacrifice. And by sacrifice, uh, we mean Atma Samarpan. I'm putting my soul in equilibrium. And we mean Yagya. We're, we're uniting with you. We're uniting with you in the perfection of harmony and unity. And now we place the pot on top of the rice, which is on top of the place where we just touched the earth. And say, cause the effulgent fire of perception to enter into your highly honored container for renewed nourishment. Here I'm putting this effulgent fire fire of perception, all of my conscious awareness, this illuminated purity, clarity, the, this blazing fire of purity and the purifier, I'm putting it all into this pot, this container, and remaining there, let it increase in thousands so that upon removable, or upon, upon removal, abounding in spotlessly pure strength, it may come flowing into us. Oh, I want this fire, this purity, this clarity, this consciousness to stay in the pot so, and just grow and grow in intensity and in bhavana and, and capacity. And then because when I take it out of the pot, I want it to come flowing unto us with that great intensity abounding in spotlessly pure strength. And then I'm going to assume that consciousness that becomes my illumination. Now I'm going to fill that pot with water. All the waters, you waters are declared the ultimate of waters. Hey, of all the waters in the universe, the waters in my pot are the ultimate of waters. Oh, I got the best of all the best waters. Hey, you look around and check anybody else's water. My water is the best. The ultimate of waters established in all creation begotten, abiding in waters as the eternal law of truth. Abiding in waters as the eternal law of truth. And forever abiding in waters as the eternal law of truth. And that's what I'm pouring. This ocean of consciousness. The eternal law of truth. This satyam. This ritam satyam. This ritam, this amritam, the, the eternal law, this a law of nectar, this law of truth, ritam satyam, this, it's eternally blissful truth. And now I'm going to place some wealth. We place generally five coins of any currency in which country we are there. But you could use five jewels. You could use five diamonds. You could use abundance handfuls of diamonds. You could put whatever gems and jewels. And we just put a couple of quarters into a pot. But yeah, we're on the low end. If you're a high-end pujari, you can take diamonds and gold and silver and all the jewels and gems and let wealth, even abundance, be victorious. Let wealth be sufficient as to be victorious over the severe ocean of existence. And that means I want sufficient wealth in this pot. Everyone's going to know this pot is full of the greatest wealth. It will dispel poverty and pain and affliction from anybody who comes in the vicinity of this pot. Because after we take the prana back and make the sergeant of the pot, we're going to distribute the contents of the pot. So one day there was a, there was a tremendous drought 
all over India. Every, everyone was crying out for water. The plants were dying. The, 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 uh, the, 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 the cattle were wanting for water. They were crying out for water. The farms were, were impoverished. The people were experiencing so much pain except Gautam Muni. Gautam Muni was worshiping Gayatri Devi. And he had a pot on his altar filled with the love of Gayatri Devi. Every day he would go and worship the pot. He would put all the stuff that he got into the pot. Every day you could look at your clock, a cloud would come right over Gautam Muni's ashram and it would just pour down rain. And Gautam Muni was just he had everything he needed. And the Brahmins on the outside, they were saying, oh my God, we're dying, our, our cattle are dying, we can't raise crops, our children are crying for food, let's go take the refuge of, of Gautam Muni. We'll go to Gautam's ashram. They went to Gautam's ashram, knocked on the door, knock, 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 and Gautam opened the door. Oh, the holy Brahmins have come to bless me. They, they said, no, 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 Gautam, we, we are in pain and we are in want and we are so afflicted by the, the, the outcome of this drought. Can we please take refuge in your ashram? And Gautam said, Brahmins don't take refuge. They are venerable. I will worship you. Please, Ihagach, Ihagach, come in and sit down. And he went to his pot and he stuck his hand in the pot and he pulled out asans. He said, everybody here, see, here's a place. Sit down. And he got a, he scooped up some water out of the pot. He washed their feet. And then he gave them all baths and ornaments and new cloth. And he said, gave them food, scrumptious, delicious meals. He pulled right out of the pot. And then he said, Here's some wood, and here's some rice, and here's some some, some grains. You please, everybody worship Gayatri. You are Brahmins. You all know Gayatri mantra. Please make homa with Gayatri. And the Brahmins sat down and they started making a homa of Gayatri mantra. And every day. The cloud would come right over Gautam Muni's ashram and it would rain. And the rest of the world was drying up and they were all perplexed for want of water. And all the people from oh, hundreds of miles away said, let's go to Gautam Muni's ashram. And they all, oh, as many people as came, Gautam would reach into the pot and he would worship the Brahmins and he'd give them the samadri for the puja and for the homa and he would say, worship Gayatri. And the, the ashram grew and grew and grew and every day the cloud would come and pour water on Gautam Muni's ashram. Well, the fame of Gautam Muni pervaded the earth and the heavens. That everyone was saying, thank God for Gautam Muni. He saved all of the humanity. He saved all of our children. He saved the human beings for posterity. This is the greatness of Gautam Muni. And some of the Brahmins started thinking, well, wait a minute. We're Brahmins. We are reciting the Gayatri Mantra. We are doing the Pujas. We are doing the Homas. We are, why are they only saying the name of Gautam Muni? He saved everybody. We are doing the Puja. They should be praising the Brahmins too. And they entered upon a devious plan. They took an old sick cow and they prodded that cow to the door of the Yagshala, where they were making the Homa. And they pushed the cow inside the building, and Gautam Muni said, the mantra, Hum Fat Swaha, and he threw the offering into the fire, and the fire shot up and touched the ceiling, and there was illumination all around, and the cow fell over and died. And they said, oh, Gautam Muni killed the cow. 
with his mantra. He killed the cow. That's Gohatya. He's Bahapatak. He's a great sinner. He has killed the cow with his mantra. Everybody's saying so many nice things about Gotamuni, and actually, he's a murderer. Not too much different from what happens today. <laughs> Look at the United States Congress. <laughs> anyway, go Tom just sat there and he thought, what is the cause of this? And he meditated for a while and he said, ego is so subtle. Ego is so strong. Attachment is so a problem. It is so strong. It could take away even the minds of meditating munis. Even the Brahmins were moved from the path of truth because of their egotism and their attachment. They couldn't stand to hear the praise of another Brahmin. Well, Gotam got mad. And he took some water in his hands. And he looked at those Brahmins. And he said, Brahmins, I curse you. You will leave your job. You will leave your tap. You will leave your, your dharma. Your dharma will only be for show and for sale. You'll only make pujas when there's money on the plate. You'll, only, you'll all go to America and make hamburgers. You'll go to, to the West and you'll become computer programmers. You will stop wearing your tilak. You will stop wearing a sacred thread. You will stop wearing rudraksha. You will leave your dharma. You'll only do it for show, for sale. And if there's no money, you won't worship. And he threw that water on those brahmins. And when that water hit those Brahmins, they realized the intensity of what they had done. And they begged for forgiveness. And the compassionate Gautam Muni said to them, I will give you one way in which you can be freed from this curse. When all of you, every Brahmin begins to put on a tilak and wear a reduction and wear a sacred thread and have a, 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 do regular nitya karma on perform jap and tap and do gayatri jap and study your dharma and study the tradition and study the Sanskrit and believe again in the power of the goddess then you will be free from the curse. So, here we are, trying to start an epidemic. We want all the Brahmins to start to worship again. We want everyone who has come to our dharma to begin to live the dharma all the time. Remember the curse that we will leave the dharma and we'll only pursue material aspirations. Now, reach into your pot and look at the abundance of wealth that's in the pot. Look at the, 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 the severe ocean of existence. We'll be, we will be victorious over the severe ocean of existence, is Bab Samudra. We will be victorious only by the wealth which we have stored in our dharma, in our pot, our container of consciousness as a bow to protect us safe from the enemies of desire let it be victorious to illuminate all we are pursuing the wealth of illumination this is the wealth of Lakshmi the Laksh, the goal the definition the definition of the goal the which we can illuminate all the goal is what we cherish the goal is what we think of the goal is the definition of where our mind is at the goal is our wealth because we think of it all the time now put a fruit on top of the pot close the pot don't let any of that wealth escape Close it with a coconut, if you can. If you can't, 
then put an apple there. If you have a small enough pot, you can put a little orange. If you want, you can put one of those cuties or a tangerine. But got to close the pot with a fruit. And that which bears fruit, and that which bears no fruit, that without flowers, and that with flowers as well, to we who exist, born of the Lord of the vast, set us free. All this is God. That's the meaning of our fruit. The fruit of our karma. Remember in Ishupanishad, it tells us that by actions in the world, we overcome death, and by meditation, we achieve immortality. The Lord of the vast, to we who exist, born of the Lord of the vast, set us free. By actions in the world, we overcome death, and by meditation, we achieve immortality. You can't do it by one alone. Got to have them both. Got to have dharma manifesto karma. And then, by meditation, we achieve immortality. All this is God. Now, take your red powder, your sindhu, and put a happy face, a chandra, a, a little half moon, just as a smiley face on your fruit. If you've got a coconut, you can make a big smile. And if you've got a little tangerine, he'll be smiling a little bit. But make him happy, because you've got to have a happy face. You want to worship God or goddess with a happy face? Put on a happy face. The pious mark of red vermilion symbolizing the ocean of love. Shindu Ramaru it, it, It's the, the love placed prominently upon the head, above the nose, bursting forth, allow the vibrance of youth to fly. We're feeling this vibrance of youth, this red, which means uh, love, it means passion, it means desire. I am passionately in love with God. Makes me smile. As the stream of ghee pours into the flames, those spirited steeds of the divine fire consume the logs of wood, increasing the will and self-reliance of the worshiper. You got willpower, you've got self-reliance, you've got confidence. It's different from ego, shumba, from self-conceit. Self-reliance is not the same as self-conceit. When you have self-conceit, you're proud, and you're thinking only of yourself. When you have self-reliance, you come into relationship as an equal partner. This red-colored powder indicates love who drives the chariot of the light of wisdom. Aruna is love, that universal love who drives Surya's chariot. The Surya is the light of wisdom, the warmth of devotion, with which we are worshiping our Lord. How can you worship without love? The more you love, the more you pay attention. The more you pay attention, the more focused you are. You come into meditation because of our love. Please be pleased, O oh great seer of all, with this offering of red-colored power. Om, oh, we bow to the highest principle, the Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. So you got a happy face, and then you can put a little nose in front if you want, and you've got a chandra and a bindu. And that smiley face has got a little smile and a bindu, and you got a happy face. You got Chandra and Bindu. And that's the Chandra Bindu sits over Om. And the Chandra means that the soul is infinite, there's no end to the soul. He's also a very happy soul, but he's infinite. And the Bindu means it's the one point where we unite with God. That happiness, that joy, that infinite self is one with the universal soul. Now we'll add some kumkum. You can put it on the top of his head, on top of the coconut. You are being adorned with this divine red powder which is made more beautiful by the love we share with you and is so pleasing. 
Oh Lord, when we present this red powder, be pleased, O supreme ruler of all, with this offering of red colored powder, Om Hum Hanumate, Rudra Makaya, Rudra Atma Kaya, the embodiment of the soul of the he who takes away the tears. Om, we bow to the highest principle, to Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. Put some sandal paste. Or you are being adorned with this beautiful divine piece of sandalwood ground to a paste which is so pleasing. Please accept this offering of sandal paste, O Supreme Sovereign of all the gods. With the offering of sandal paste, Om, we bow to the highest principle, to Hanuman, to the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. And some turmeric. O oh Lord, you are being gratified by this turmeric, the giver of comfort and beauty. When you are worshipped like this, then you must bestow upon us the greatest peace. With this offering of turmeric, oh, we bow to the highest principle, the Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings, cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. So now we've offered uh, some sindhu, which means the love, and we've offered the kumkum, which is the, the beauty that we share, and we offered the sandal paste, which is the cooling and pleasing and healthy, uh, uh, this divine sandal place, which, uh, which cools us and, and, and soothes us and makes us pure, and we offer the turmeric, which is the emblem of peace and takes away all disease. And you may find many remedies in Ayurveda uh, which combine uh, uh, turmeric and sandal paste into a paste which is so cooling, soothing, pleasing. And now we're going to give a milk bath. Coming from the ocean of being, the fulfiller of all desires, grantor of supreme bliss to all souls, for the motive of purifying or sanctifying this holy union, we request you to accept this bath with this offering of milk for your bath. Home we bow to the highest principle, the Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. The milk signifies the infinite ocean of pure consciousness. And now we're going to offer a yogurt bath, which means the congealed form of purity that is the individual soul, the jivatma, as compared or in relationship to the, the universal soul or the paramatma. So the yogurt stands for jivatma, the milk stands for paramatma. Derived from the milk, uh, from milk, from the ocean of being, sweet and pleasing like the glow of the moon, let these curds, this dahi, eternally be our ambassador as we request you to accept this bath with this offering of yogurt for your bath. Om, we bow to the highest principle, to Hanuman, to the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. And now we're going to offer ghee, which is uh, illumination. It's also clarified butter. So we put the illumination of the individual soul along with the, in union with the universal, universal soul. The individual and the universal soul are illuminated, freshly pe prepared from the ocean of being, causing all fulfillment. We offer this delightful ghee, this clarified butter, and request you to accept this bath. With this offering of ghee for your bath, Om, we bow to the highest principle, to Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify, I am one with God. And now we have a honey bath. We offer this nourishment. So we are giving you nourishment for the illumination of the individual soul in union with the supreme soul. Uh, prepared from flowers of the ocean of being, enjoyable as the sweetest of the sweet. Causing the fire of divine nourishment to burn swiftly, we request you to accept this bath with this offering of honey for your bath. Om, we bow to the highest principle to Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God.
And now we're offering sugar. And the sugar is the sweetness. You've got the sweetness and the nourishment which grant you the illumination of the union between the individual soul and the supreme soul, milk, yogurt, ghee, honey, and sugar, panch amrit. These are the five nectars with which we bathe our goddess, or in this case, the supreme lord, Hanuman. From the lake of sugar cane, from the ocean of being, which causes the nourishment of sugar to give divine protection from all impurity, we request you to accept this bath with this offering of sugar for your bath home. We bow to the highest principle, the Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. Now we'll mix all five of them together. We'll make one big mess, one big bath. Uh, milk, curd, ghee, and then honey and sugar mixed together. These five nectars are our ambassador. This is, uh, I'm, I'm sending my ambassador to you, divine being, so that you will know that I want to give you the sweetness and nourishment which causes the illumination of the union between the individual soul and the supreme soul. That's my, uh, uh, my ambassador, as we request you to accept this bath. That's why I'm bathing you. I, I'm not afraid of getting a little dirt on my hands. <laughs> With this offering of five nectars for your bath home, we bow to the highest principle, the Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. We'll offer some scented oil or some aguru or some perfume if you like. Actually not, we'll save the perfume for later, but we have something, uh, rose water is what I usually use. Mom uses aguru. Uh, with the various beautifully smelling ingredients as well as the scent of sandal, we offer you this scented oil, O Lord. With this offering of scented oil, Om, we bow to the highest principle, to Hanuman, the reliever, uh, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. And now we'll offer this some perfume. Oh, she is the cause of the scent, which is the door to religious ecstasy, unconquerable, never failing, continually nurturing for all time. May we never tire from calling that manifestation the highest respect, the supreme goddess of all existence, Sri Lakshmi. With this offering of scented bath home, we bow to the highest principle to Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. And now we'll wash off the whole mess with water from all the sacred rivers of, of the land where the light of wisdom always shines. Oh, please accept the waters from the Ganges, Jamuna, Godavari, Saraswati, Narmada, Sindhu, and Kaveri, which have been provided for your bath with this offering of Ganges bath waters. Om, we bow to the highest principle to Hanuman, the manifestation of the reliever of sufferings. Cut the ego, purify. I am one with God. Now that you're clean and all washed off and fragrantly scented, we'll pause here and see if there are any questions. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. We have a question from Sadhana Shakti. Namaste, Sadhana. Each syllable has so much meaning. Would it be efficient to make a plan to study one word a day and learn the meaning of each syllable, or is there a more efficient way? There's a more efficient way, Sadhana, and I, I'm sorry, I did not complete the pro uh, project, but I started to write the Swami Niganthu. And the Swami Nigantra, unfortunately it's only in Sanskrit, but it is a, uh, a one verse for each letter describing how that letter fits together with other letters and it, it shows the etymology of each vibration 
how we, the vibrations combine into syllables and the syllables amplify and modify each other and combine into words and the words amplify and modify each other and combine into mantras and the mantras amplify and modify each other until you get this, this cacophony of vibration which communicates to you the inner essence of what it's talking about. And if you like, if everyone likes, then maybe we could spend a few days going through what I have written of the Swami Nigantu. Nigantu means a dictionary. And um, they, uh, there are several Nigantu. I just got a new Nigantu today uh, that was scanned in by somebody in India. And thank you very much. Uh, for forwarding it to me. Uh, I haven't had time to go through it yet, but I've been writing my own dictionary of the meaning of all the letters and all the bijas and all the bij mantras, and this would be a wonderful, it is a fun study, because you've got to get on the vibrational level to understand the intellectual and the vibratory meaning uh, of what is a letter. What is a kshar and what is akshar? And kshar means limited. And akshar means unlimited. Because did, did you ever hear this, the pitch of a tuning fork? And you hit it once and it vibrates and vibrates and you can hear the sound for hours later. It's just, that frequency is vibrating in your brain, in your soul. Well, Akshar is unlimited because that vibration continues to vibrate in your soul. And when you study intellectually, what, by, what am I aiming towards when I study this vibration? What feeling am I striving to achieve? Then you get more and more meaning from your study of Sanskrit. So this could be one of the projects that we take, undertake during Navaratri, if you like. Please. We have a question from Vivekananda. Namaste, Vivek. Namaste. How can Hanuman help us conquer the great fear? Oh, the, the greatest fear is being separate from God. And even greater than being separate from God is to be separate from God without a way back to, to union with God. That's the greatest fear. So how can the servant of God who is eternally full of the joy and the energy and the, 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 the vibrations of God, the dut, Ram Dutaya, Bidmahe, he is the ambassador of God. He knows where he is. He's got self-confidence. He's got self-reliance. He's not full of ego, but he knows that he is the ambassador, the representative, the express representative of that form of divinity. If we worship him, we become like him. And the more you stay with your guru and understand her qualities and characteristics, and you imbibe those qualities and characteristics until you take on that vibration yourself, and you begin to manifest that vibration in everything you do, that poise and equilibrium, that efficiency and, and that love and generosity that, that thinks only about others and not for herself. Vivek, by, it's guilt by association. You come, become guilty like the gods and goddesses. We have a question from Swarupananda. Namaste Swarupananda. Namaste. For the offering of scent, why is it that the scent is the door to religious ecstasy? Oh, because it closes off our nostrils. We can't get any foul smell. Do you know I used to, in Jageshwar, there's, there's an old custom. Of course, there were no toilets in Jageshwar. And the whole village used to go down to the bank of the river every morning and enjoy complete privacy for all that they did. Well, I had a terrible habit of going down to the, to the mandir, which was just next to the bank of the river, and I would sit down and chant the chandi. And I would sit in the dark of night, and just as the sun would start coming up, there became this 
amazing fragrance that wafted <laughs> over me from the bank of the river. And I wish that I had some fragrant perfume to put in my nostrils because I was doing pranayam and sitting there in the temple in doing pranayam and inhaling this wonderful ecstatic scent. So that's why if you have this, this uh, if you have the opportunity to have some scent with you, you can change uh, the, the, the constitution of what's coming into your olfactory uh, 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 perception. So uh, you'll be able to control the, your sense of smell. And when you can control your sense of smell, your mind won't go to the bank of the river and say, what is that anyway? What did you have for dinner last night? Oh! <laughs> You'll keep your mind in the chanting that you, you like to do. We have a question from Srini. Yes, Srini Baba, namaste. Namaste, Rami Mami. How can we contemplate Lord Hanuman as the son of the wind to inspire us in our spiritual pursuits? Lord Hanuman is not stopped by anyone. He is emancipated. He is totally free. He flies where he wants to. He moves at his own will according to his swachand. He, is, he moves according to his own rhythm. And when we look at the example of Hanuman and what he accomplished in his life, what were his goals and what was his path and what was his process and how did he go about it? He knew he was strong and yet he was humble as could be. He said to Ravan, I have the, uh, I have the capacity to take your life right now but I don't have the mandate from my Lord. <laughs> don't you be egoistic with me. And yet he was humble. He knew his limits. He knew, he, he said, I could defeat Lanka in a moment. <laughs> but the glory should go to Ram. Now, if we assume the qualities and the characteristics, the attributes of Hanuman in the way that we perform our seva, then we will be freed from the egotism and from the attachment of all the things that we are doing. Hanuman was a true servant of the Lord. All he wanted was to sit at the feet of God. If you looked in his heart, all you would see was Ram and Sita. He was just in every way the embodiment of pure devotion and pure love. Only fixed in service to the Lord. He was the ambassador of the Lord. Srini Baba, if we can inculcate those attributes into our own behavior, we become the reflection of the pure devotee. We have a question from Kantananda. Namaste, Kanta. Namaste. Are there temples in India that are devoted exclusively to Hanuman? Or yep. does Hanuman belong to every Shiva temple? Hanuman belongs to every Shiva temple, and there are thousands of temples devoted only to Hanuman. And Kanta, you are so much welcome to come and join us in Banaras and worship in the Hanuman temple. We'll sing the Sundarkand. Uh, we'll go to the Shiva temple and sing the Rudra Stadhyay. We'll go to the Annapurna temple and sing the Chandi and the Annapurna Sahasranam. You are so much welcome to come and join us as you can. Kashi. <laughs> we have a question from Julia. Namaste, Julia Ma. Thank you for your beautiful testimonial. I think it's more like another chapter in my next book. I, it'll take me a few hours to go through it, but thank you very much. I hope to find one or two sentences that serve Adoitjananda's purpose. Namaste, Pranam. In the Rudras Yai, in chapter 2, it talks about the beginning of creation. First, existence was created, land, and then sacrifice. Can you talk more about why sacrifice was created at the very beginning and how this helps us? Absolutely. When we give up our egotism, our attachment, we come into union. So the first thing in creation was that sense of coming into union, of yoga, of yajna. Yajna was the first thing invented. How do you unite with God? You came out, they made the whole creation and said, okay, now we're making a yagya so you can unite with this creation. 
Yagina Yagya Maya Janta Devastani Dharmani Pratman Yasan. This was the first Pratamang. Pratamang Yasan. It was the first that applied to all of us together. You, how do you unite? How do you bring together? Sangha Chadwang, come together. All of us come together. Pratamanya san. We, how we come together? Yagya. Unite. Sangha Chadwang, everyone come together. How do you do that? Through Yagya. Now they're not, they're not just talking about uh, sitting around a fire although that's very beautiful. But they're talking about the sacrifice of egotism, of duality, of attachment, the sacrifice of all that I am clinging on to that preserves my individual identity. Now that's the sacrifice. The fire is just a means, it's sadam. It's not the sacrifice. That's the ceremony of sacrifice. The sacrifice is actually giving up our attachment, giving up our ego. Remember, yag is from the same root as yog. The root is huge. And huge means to unite. So when you do yagya, you do yoga. And when you do yoga, you come into union. When we establish the pot, is there any difference in establishing the pot every day for nine days or establishing it for nine days and leaving it? Yes, there's a big difference. When you can establish the pot every day, do it. Not just for nine days, do it for every day of your life. Get in the habit of taking that energy into the murti, into your heart, out of your heart, into the pot, out of the pot, into your heart, out of the heart, into the yantra, out of the yantra, into your heart, out of the heart, into the fire, out of the fire, into your heart, out of your heart, and put it wherever you want. You get to move that energy. You get to be one with that energy. You're training yourselves. How do I move energy? It's my energy. I become Shaktiman, the holder of the energy. And Shaktiman, he gets to control his or her own energy. It's all me. So whenever you can perform the Pran Pratishta, whenever you can perform the Kailashtap, wherever you can perform as much puja as you can perform, you get more and more energy, more and more vibrations, more and more control, more and more understanding of what it is you're trying to control, and then you get to design the circumstances of life to fit your goals, to fit your objectives, to move in the way that you choose to move, instead of being afflicted by this force and that force and battered around, pushed around, and have life dictate to you what you will, what kind of life you will lead. We all know what that feels like. It feels like I have no power. I have no choice. I've got to do it. I am responsible. I'm obligated. I've got these burdens that I'm carrying. And when we take control and we start to define life according to our sankalpa, according to our laksha, and we move the energy where it will it's most needed and where it will do the most good and where it will get, have the greatest effect to bring me to that, up, uh, that ultimate objective that I choose to reach, my son cult. Then we are empowering ourselves to become one with the universal self. We empower ourselves to become one with God. And that's what the Kailash Stapan and the Pran Pratishta will do for us in our daily pujas. Om Sam Sarasvati Namaha Namaste.